Women's Experiences of Outpatient Hysteroscopy, Part 2. Number 11, New Stobhill Hospital. It was done without anaesthetic. It was excruciatingly painful. I was not made aware of my options beforehand. I was left feeling traumatised, shocked. I felt violated. Number 12. Royal Stoke University Hospital They proceeded to do a diagnostic hysteroscopy where they found a couple of polyps, which meant I could not have the ablation. So while I was there, they removed the polyps. They were scraping me off the ceiling. It was very painful. They also fitted a coil, which I had decided previously not to have. It took ages to stop hurting. I cannot tell women not to go, as these things need sorting, but do not expect anything silly like pain relief. I would like to tell the staff members concerned, particularly one of the senior staff, that in my opinion they should not be working in the NHS with the behaviour they showed me. They were curt and in my view did not show the proper duty of care. Number 13. Colchester General Hospital Mine happened a year or so ago now. I did call Patient Advice and Liaison Service, but I couldn't face talking about it in the end. I had no idea what to expect. I trusted the two nurses and two doctors. The pain was excruciating. I was yelling, absolutely rigid, because I was in so much pain. I felt the doctor ignored my obvious pain, full body sweat and shouting. I couldn't help but shout because the pain was so bad. I was informed that I have a tight cervix, as though it was my fault. If the doctor had checked my notes, they would have seen that I have had two C-sections, leading to a lot of scarring, and that I am perimenopausal. I didn't know that the procedure could have been stopped. I couldn't speak. It went on and on. I didn't know that I could have a general anaesthetic. The leaflet just mentioned two paracetamol for some mild cramping. I was then sent to a little room to clean up. That's when I realised that I was covered in blood. I was shaking and sweating. It took ages to get dressed, but I managed it. I left the room. I could only go as far as the loo just past the waiting area before I had to sit down as I felt faint. It took me about 30 minutes to get to the reception area after having to stop because I bled through my clothes. I had to stop driving several times because I was in so much pain. A few days later I had to go to my GP for an examination as I had developed an infection. My GP was horrified at the state of me and showed me the letter they had been sent. The letter stated that it was a normal procedure, no mention of me finding it excruciating, suggesting that future procedures would need to be done under a general. The pain I experienced was completely ignored. It didn't matter so long as the target is met to have X amount of procedures in the outpatient clinic. Number 14. Airedale General Hospital I had a hysteroscopy. It was painful, traumatic. The information I was given beforehand downplayed the procedure. I've no understanding why pain relief wasn't given. I went into what I can only describe as shock. When researched, this is a common mistreatment happening. Something needs to be done. I went home feeling upset and shaken up. As an NHS nurse, I'm completely disgusted. I couldn't have the Mirena coil fitted at the end of the procedure as my blood pressure was low. I felt nauseous, weak, and the pain was so excruciating, and I've had a child. This did not compare. But I had no trust in the surgeon that they wouldn't cause me further unmanageable pain. Something needs to change in this procedure, as I and many women now feel traumatised, 
frightened for any future medical procedures, and are left with a loss of trust in what should be a safe environment you can literally put your life in their hands. Number 15, Queen Elizabeth Hospital. I too experienced the most excruciating pain during this procedure. I can honestly say no amount of painkillers would have dealt with this pain. It was so severe and totally unexpected. The two nurses were lovely and tried to distract me with conversation. However, this did not work either. I feel that this procedure should not be carried out without some kind of anaesthetic as the pain is like no other. Number 16, Ormskirk and District's General Hospital. They started the procedure and was quite rough the way they inserted the first item and I said that it hurt, to which they said they'd hardly started. Then they pushed this thing in quite firmly and it started to really hurt in my sides. It made me cry out. I told them to stop and whilst I was really hurting they asked me what I wanted them to do. I said I would give it another try. So they restarted and it felt like my sides were going to explode. The pain was so excruciating and I shouted for them to stop. I was shaking and crying out loud. It was worse than having a baby. I wasn't offered any pain relief. In fact, the booklet from the NHS implies it is a, a pain-free procedure and you would only have slight cramping. Number 17, Southlands Hospital. I suffer with fibromyalgia and had significant anxiety about the appointment. Once I was called through to the procedure room, I was instructed to remove my underwear and hitch up my skirt, place my legs on the supports and relax. The consultant didn't even make eye contact with me. The nurse stood by my side like a statue. I wasn't offered any comfort or reassurance, despite my obvious distress. Then it began. I was filled inside with water. As the doctor started, I screamed out in pain. My uterus started contracting and I felt like I was in labour. At no point did they offer to stop. The nurse said and did nothing. Then they attempted to insert the camera and I nearly hit the ceiling. It was searing agony. I have never felt pain like it and I felt like I was going to pass out. The doctor said, as I was making such a fuss, he would use a local anaesthetic on my cervix, which they promptly injected. I sobbed and sobbed. It felt like medieval torture. They then tried the camera again. It was still agony. I bit down and cried. I was told to hold still and it would soon be over. Before I could even think about it, they had shoved a coil in me that I didn't really want and then I was told to get my underwear back on. I could barely move. I think I was in shock. I felt sick, faint and in disbelief that this was happening to me. I then got up and I felt wet as water ran down my legs. Not just water, I discovered. It was mixed with my blood. It was all over my skirt. It had run off the seat and all over the floor like a horror scene. When I got home and got out of the car, I realised I had bled straight through the towel, my clothes and all over the car seat. As the afternoon went on, I felt worse and worse. I felt like a wreck and like I had just been tortured. I'm still petrified of having my neck smear. I dread the time this coil needs to be removed because I don't think I can let them near me again. I will never trust a doctor when they say something is simply uncomfortable. I still think about it and have flashbacks of that pain. Number 18, Kettering General Hospital. The doctor showed me a long appliance which looked like a long rod. I was told this had a camera on one end of it and would be used to look at the inside of my uterus. 
I felt severe pain immediately as this rod pierced through my cervix and I immediately started to panic. I closed my eyes and I can remember my breathing became rapid. I felt lightheaded. The nurse to my right noticed and she kept asking me to repeat my name and date of birth over and over again. Whilst the nurse to my left placed her hand on my left shoulder and told me I had to slow my breathing down. When the procedures were over, my chair was raised to a sitting position and I was told to walk through to the other room, get dressed and I could leave. I managed to get dressed but then I started to feel sick, lightheaded and I was beginning to sweat. I had extreme pains coming from my stomach and my vagina. I can only liken these pains to labour pains. I felt very hot, sick and faint. The nurse noticed this and also commented that my blood pressure was incredibly low. I told her that I felt sick and faint. She laid me down on the couch and told me to stay there. After about 90 minutes, I said that I was still in pain, but not as much. And although I still felt very unwell, I was allowed to leave. I still felt lightheaded and could not walk very far. My husband took one look at me and said that I looked absolutely terrible, incredibly pale and unwell. He was very shocked that I looked so poorly. I went home and rested up for the rest of the day as advised. However, I was still in pain and felt weak. I was still shaking and I kept having flashbacks to the procedure. Why was I not informed that some women experience severe pain and discomfort with a hysteroscopy? Why are they still being carried out without the options of any pain relief? Why was I not given the option to have pain relief, sedation or an anaesthetic? I feel I was seriously misled and that I was not given the correct information prior to the procedures. Number 19. Hull Royal Infirmary. The letter sent beforehand informed me that some women will experience severe pain. I explained that I do not tolerate pain very well. I said it twice and that I will require whatever is available, not being aware that being put to sleep is an option. I was quickly asked to sign a form and then within half an hour I was having the procedure done. The pain was like torture, and it was decided after seeing a large polyp and how much pain I was in that we would have to stop and reschedule for a general anaesthetic in the next few weeks. When I sat in the recovery room, I felt shaken and embarrassed as if I had been violently assaulted. I was not given the option of a general anaesthetic before, and so the form I signed was basically an uninformed consent, and there would be no way that I would have agreed to what did actually happen to me. I have now had the polyp removed whilst asleep, and thankfully I am on the road to recovery, but I feel this has got to stop. Number 20. Royal Surrey County Hospital after an internal scan of my uterus, I was suspected of having a polyp. I spoke to my GP on the phone, who said they would refer me to a consultant gynaecologist. I got my appointment through. All I was given was a letter with a time and the name of my consultant. I assumed we would be meeting to discuss my symptoms, heavy irregular bleeding, and where we would go from there. When I arrived at the hospital, a nurse asked me if I knew why I was there. I said to talk to the gynaecologist. The nurse told me I was booked in for a hysteroscopy and I should get changed out of my clothes and into a gown. This was the first I had heard anything about a hysteroscopy. At this point, I should really have said, no, I'm not ready for this. I don't know anything about this. But I thought I was there now and I wanted a diagnosis, so I got changed. I was sat in a chair that looked like something out of The Handmaid's Tale. 
the consultant arrived, very late and harassed, and told me they were going to pass a camera into my womb, have a look round, and possibly take a biopsy or remove the polyp. I was not given any warning about pain or offered any pain medication. I have not had children, so when the instruments reached my cervix, I froze and cried out. I felt shocked this was happening to me. The nurses told me to breathe and relax. Ridiculous. They managed to get a camera into my womb briefly, but it was so uncomfortable I told them to stop, which they did, thankfully. Only after the procedure was stopped was I given a form to sign, giving my consent. There must be a better, kinder way of handling these procedures. We are not pieces of meat to be poked and prodded with no care for our well-being. Do no harm. If you found this video interesting and informative, please like and subscribe to the channel. The link to our group is in the description box below. And also the link to the campaign against painful hysteroscopy, whose materials can be found on Facebook. I decided to do these videos in order to help the campaign. Unfortunately, given that I spend most of my free time running my perimenopause group, I can't do any more than this. Um, I'm glad I've been able to help in a small way. Thank you very much for listening.